I bless y'all brothers and sisters. So uh, this video is going to be about the one save, always save doctrine that's that's been roaming around and deceiving many. I know many will have their own uh, interpretation, but I want to come with scriptures. I studied to show myself approved. I rightfully divided the word of truth. I prayed about it. I sought the Lord and the Holy Spirit just led me into a deep study because I felt compelled. And, and this is going to be the only reason why chains get broken loose, because the devil is truly moving in this hour with all types of doctrines. Of, uh, of demons so so let me go ahead and pray i thank you heavenly father that that you uh have raised me up to be not only a, a child of god but somebody watching over your sheep you told peter to feed your sheep heavenly father i do this video to honor you and to bring glory to you and i also do this lord god to feed your sheep with the word of god heavenly father the bible says that man shall not live off bread alone but each and every last word proceeding out of the mouth of god so heavenly father i do this teaching to feed anybody that has an ear to hear and i to see. Lord God, I know that you will bless this word and you will add the increase to this word. And I just pray that you prepare the hearts to receive this word, Lord God. Give us ears to hear and 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 to uh, what the spirit is saying in this hour, Lord God. I bless the listeners. I bless the reading of your word and I ask that you bless the reader of your word, Lord. As we search for truth in this dark and wicked and perverse world that we live in. So I bless you, Jesus, and I ask that you have your way in this very teaching right here. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. So I bless you, brothers and sisters. I, I'm ready to I'm ready to serve. So I just pray that you you have an ear to hear and you listen to these scriptures. And even and even if you tune in and you do believe in eternal security and one save, always save. I just want you to listen to these scriptures. Just just, you know, humble yourself and listen to this, this these scriptures that I'm about to give to you. So so this teaching has been originally uh, given uh, from a man uh, named John Calvin. He started this doctrine, uh, you know, a, way, a while back. I'll leave uh, descriptions. Uh, I'll leave uh, links in the description. Uh, this teaching is, you know, it's called easy believism. It's called faith alone. It's called eternal security or or you can call it hyper grace. You know, it's a Protestant teaching. So. So I'm going to go ahead and, and give you this word. I want to start off with uh, uh, first Timothy four one. Um, it talks about uh, let's go ahead and read it. So first Timothy four one, it says now the spirit ex uh, speaks expressively in the latter times that some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. So as you can see in this passage, it's, it says in the latter days, which the, the times we're living in, in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith. I'm talking about the faith, the gospel that which was first preached, the first gospel, not uh, different gospels. And, 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 you know, these some shall depart from the, the faith, the true living faith about living holy and righteous unto God, serving him, living for him and loving him with your whole heart and, and be, just being compelled to do his will. So some shall depart from that and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So these doctrines of devils and seducing spirits will tell you to do the opposite. So I'm going to read you this word. And I just wanted to start off with the reading of this word, uh, children of God. I wanted to start off with this. OK, I know there's scriptures out there uh, saying that we're sealed to the day of redemption and all of these scriptures. But if you rightfully divide the word, uh, uh, it speaks differently. I'm not saying God con contradicts in his own word. He you no, know, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is when you start dividing your word, you start understanding what it truly means, because there's many out there that's false converts. They're not fully converted. They they confess that they believe, but then they're not indwelled with the Holy Spirit of God. So you just you just have a war going on with, with man's soul. And, and people have to, you know, it's people going to church, but they never been born again. And Jesus clearly told Nicodemus that unless you be born again, uh, you will not see the kingdom of God. So I'm going to go into this teaching uh, uh, and I pray that you take these words and you study on them yourself and even pray on them because God will show you uh, the truth and the truth will set you free. So so let me start off by saying that. Uh, that, that we are not Christians in word only, but also in deed. So true faith invites you to, to have part in Christ's righteousness. We know that. Where well, the Bible says that by faith, uh, uh, we, are, uh, you know, we are justified by faith. 
So, so true faith invites you to have part in Christ's righteousness, his atonement and his grace, which saves a man's soul. Right. Amen. So, but it produces holy fruits and it is shown to be real by the effects on a person's life. Uh, a true, true believing is not outward. Uh, not not outward co a confession only, but an inward work of the heart. So the Bible even says that the devils believe and they tremble. And and uh, that's what the Bible says. Even the devils believe and they tremble. And and that uh, and that right there uh, is James 2, 19. It says, thou believest there is one God. You do well. But even the devils believe and they tremble. So I want to I want to make a point. So so so. Uh, so the Bible says even the devils believe, which means the devils even have faith and they tremble. If those that believe are justified by this type of faith, even the d demons would be justified as well because they have that 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 same type of faith. But but nonetheless, they tremble and they still are not justified. Therefore, that that type of faith isn't true faith. Uh, Abraham. You know, his faith was rewarded by his obedience. Amen. So there is a faith that works by love and obedience um, and, and, and which purifies the heart. Um, you know, the faith is is an action word, brothers and sisters. Faith is an action word. Uh, just like love is an action word. Um, none of these mean nothing, completely nothing. If it if it if it's not expressed, you need to express your faith. You need to express your your love. Amen. Uh, or it means nothing. It's just a, a, a byword. It's just a word. Uh, amen. So uh, I just wanted to uh, explain that for a second. And I got these scriptures that I would like you to uh, write down if you have your pen and, and pad. So it's this is about fruit bearing, you know, bearing fruit, because the Bible says that we ought to bear fruit. And, I, and I'm seeing that what, what this fruit bearing actually means. So I'm starting to understand. And as I studied, God just gave me a greater revelation. So here go the scriptures right here about bearing fruit. So Luke 6, 43 through 45. That's one. Uh, uh, John 15, 1 through 8. That's two. And uh, Romans 6, 22. And that's three. And, uh, and the Bible also talks about the fruits of the flesh. So I want you to write those down because that's the straight opposite of the fruit bearing that, that the Lord is talking about. So fruits of the flesh will be Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Of course, the Bible says the works of the flesh, but I, but the Holy Spirit led me to put fruits of the flesh because that's what you're producing um, in your flesh um, and uh, unfruitful. So I got a, a scripture for being unfruitful, uh, with, which is Ephesians 5, 8 through 11. And I would like you to uh, study on those as well. So as we go into this teaching, I'm about to come with some scriptures uh, to to go ahead and enlighten you. Go ahead and, 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 and give you wisdom of God's word. And uh, so let's go ahead and um, let's go into it because the Bible, because I just told you that we are not just Christians uh, uh, in just a, a, a outward confession, but also in, in, in we are Christians in word and deed. Amen. So and I say that to say this in the Bible, it talks about in Titus and in, in Titus 116, it says they profess that they know God. So they're confessing just like we all confess, but in the works, they deny him. And you'll say how being abominable and disobedient to his word and unto every good work reprobate. Amen. So I want you to I want you to marinate on that. And uh, let's go to a, a next uh, a next uh, a verse. So in James 1, it says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. So Abraham, he was a doer of the word. He, he heard the word. He heard the words of his master. He heard the words of the Lord saying, you know, go do, do this. And he went and done it. He didn't sit. He went and done it. So it's, the Bible says, but be ye doers of the word. So, you know, you got this teaching saying those are all works, but. The Bible clearly is saying, be a doer and not just a hearer. You hear the words, but you're not doing them. OK, you're not you're not you're not walking in obedience to his word. OK, and if you if you don't believe that, let's go deeper. OK, so in in first in John two, four through through six, it says he that says, I know God. He that says, I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar. So it's still going back to being a doer of the word. So he that doesn't. 
he that says, I know the Lord and I keep not his, his word is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. I hereby know we that we are in him when we keep his word. And he that says we know him and we are in him, you ought to walk even as he has walked. Amen. And, that, and that's first John two, four through six. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going, uh, family in the Lord. I want I want to serve you this platter. I want to give you the steak and potatoes in this word. We, we no longer on, on milk. You know, anybody that's still on milk, they're unskillful in the word of God, the Bible says. So let's let's go deeper into this meat. So the Bible says that. So the Bible says that uh, uh, in John 14, 23, it says, Jesus said, if any man loves me, he will keep my words. Amen. And my father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. And he that loves me not keeps not my sayings. And the words you have heard is not mine, but the father. So Jesus is clearly saying he that keeps my words, he that keeps my commandments, he that that walks in them. Is the one who loves me. And there's many that confess that they love God, but they keep not his word, as it says in Titus 116. They don't, they don't, but in their works they deny him. So, so I'm finna get deep in this word, uh, children of God. I want you to put on your seatbelt, your spiritual seatbelts. I'm about to take you on a journey through my studies, through the revelation uh, the Holy Spirit has given me. So let's go to another scripture. In John 14, 15, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. See, see, this teaching, this Protestant teaching about once saved, always saved, they say all of this is works. You know, Jesus did everything at the cross, and I believe that. But what he done, he, he broke, you come in agreement with that, and you walk with him. He said, take up your cross and walk with me. So he's taking you on a journey where he will build you up in your faith, and, and he will take you through trials of your faith, where you will be tried by fire, and it's all to build you up and to mold you in his image. Amen. So so let me let me let me go to John 14, 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. These are the words from Jesus himself. So. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go deeper in because all of us say we're Christians. Right. But Christian is just a word. It's just a a, a, a quote unquote label. So so let's talk about what is a Christian? What is a Christian? Christian only means a follower of Christ. Amen. So you're saying you're a follower of Jesus. OK, so if you if you saying you're a Christian, that that automatically throws you in a follower of Jesus. So so let me let me tell you what a follower of Jesus looks like. Jesus said, if any man that desires to follow me must first deny himself, then take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23, taking up his cross daily, living holy daily, denying himself daily, deny, denying his desires. So there's things that I desire. There's things you may desire in this life, whether it be shopping, whether it be, you know, uh, satisfying your own self 24 seven. But Jesus clearly said, if anyone that desires to call, come after me must deny himself, deny what he wants, deny uh, his self satisfactions and take up his cross and follow me daily. Let's go to let's go to uh, Luke 14, 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has cannot be my disciple. So we seeing that when you say you're a Christian and you're following the Lord, you have to be a disciple or you're not following Christ. So he's saying if you haven't even forsake all, all of your past, all of the things that held you down, all of the things that effectuate you in this life. You are you cannot be my disciple because the Lord wants your all. He, he's your uh, the Bible says that a servant he's calling us servants. Right. What is a servant? A servant is a, a person who serves, serves God. So many of us, we believe, but we don't we don't have, we don't show that we serve in God in our lifestyle, in our ways and deeds. We we're not showing that we serve him. OK, let's go deeper in this word. If any man come to me and hate not his father or his mother and his wife and children and brethren and sisters and his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciple. God is starting to draw a line. He's saying you you can't come to me if you if you hate not 
your father, your mother, your children, your family, your brother and your sisters, even your own life. You cannot be my disciple. God wants your all. He wants your heart. He wants your dedication. He wants your uh, 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 faithfulness. He wants your hands and feet. Amen. When, when God, you know, he was talking to the prophets, they became his hands and feet. God wants to live in. You're no longer your own. When Christ died on the cross, we were bought with a price. The Bible clearly says that we are not our own. We don't own ourselves. The Bible says, do you not know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit and you are not your own? Children of God, we need to understand that we are not our own anymore. Even I think that was even Paul that says it's not it's not me who lives anymore, but it's he, him who lives in me. And many of us, if we if we just walking in faith and not in obedience, we're standing still and we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to compel us. If it be that the Holy Spirit is in us and we're going to get into that. So let's go into another chapter. So he that loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves the son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes not his take up, not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10, 37 through 38. God is still drawing that line because he's saying that that some of us, we haven't forsaken all of these things to follow Christ. We haven't got our, our attention, our heart off of these things, whether it be family, whether it be things of this world, whether it be friends, what whatever it may be. We still haven't taken up our cross and followed after him. We're not worthy of him if we haven't done so. Let's go ahead and even go deeper because God started talking about counting the cost and taking up our cross. And Jesus said unto them, no man having put his hand in the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 62. No one putting his hand in the plow saying they believe, but looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Bible says all those that are in Christ are a new creature and all old things have passed away. Why are you looking back in the past? Why are you reminiscing on, on, on the past? Why are you reminiscing on your club hopping and partying and doing a factuating uh, off the things that God has taken you from? You are not fit for the kingdom of God. God wants somebody that's going to look straight, narrow. You're going to go down this path that's straight and narrow. You're not looking back. Paul said reaching on the things that are before and leaving the things that are behind. Some of us, were still holding fast on the things behind and we can't go forward in our Christian walk. But of course, you would say that's works. But the Holy Spirit of God is not sitting still. Uh, and I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we're quenching and we're grieving the spirit. And we're not allowing the spirit to move where he wants to move and speak what he wants to speak and, and go into those streets and, and do some do some things. I'm telling you. Uh and, and even so, even in this chapter, looking back only leads to, to drawing back. And you don't want to draw back into perdition. The Bible spoke about those that draw back into perdition. And you need to read your Bible. So Revelation 22, 14, it says, blessed are they. Who are the blessed? Those that keep his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates unto the city. Come on. It's saying those that do his commandments. Blessed are they that that do his commandments. So these commandments are to be done. His word is ought to be lived out in your life. Oh, this path is narrow. This 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 path is narrow and it's straight. And many there be don't go down this path. Only a few go down this path. The Bible says many were called. You were called to go down this path. But only a few were chosen because they 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 only a few answered that call. Only a few answered that call and said, OK, I'm going to go down this narrow path. And, and, this, and this path is not popular. It's not popular, folks. It, it's a path that you you, you touch. You're going to get burned. But but you're going to stay narrow. You're going to stay upright in heart. But there is a path that's wide. And it's saying that you can do whatever you want to do and still be saved. You can go sin. You can go 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 do all the wickedness and, and you're going to be saved. And, and God knows your addictions and he, he's going to have mercy on you. But but that's mocking. Whatever a man sow, he also shall reap. The Bible says, and, and I had to write this down. Matthew 26, 24. The son of man goes as it is written of him. But woe unto that man whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had never been born. So it's one thing to say you believe. But if you are not living for him and dying to yourself for him, 
It is better for you have not to be even been, been born. And that goes for Judas Iscariot. This man followed the, he followed the Lord. But it was better for him that he should not even been born because he wasn't faithful. That is crazy how we're in this life right now. And many of us, we confess all of this, but it, it testifies against us through our behavior. We all oh, am a Christian, but we're not behaving as one. And you'll say that's legalistic. You'll say that's that's putting us back under the law. But this all of this that I'm reading unto you is the New Testament. And even if I go back in the Old Testament, God is the same God as he was today, yesterday and forevermore. And his characters and his principles is still the same. You don't have to sacrifice goats and cows. You don't have to cut a sheep's throat and, and throw him on the altar and, and do a sacrifice unto God. We're not under that law. We're under grace now. But but God is still looking forward to you, loving him with all your heart, thy soul, thy strength and thy mind. And, and I'm telling you, we're not going to make a mockery of the word. So we see that we're going to live it. We're going to do it. And we're going to. Uh, uh, trust in God that he'll take us through it. That's why he sent the comforter, not only to comfort us, but to guide us in all truth and to lead us down that path of life. And you can't do it on your own knowledge. You can't go to college for two years and say, I got a, you know, I got a degree in Bible study and, and Bible college. And I got this, you know, I, I, I've, I've studied the word, but, but you're not living it. It's not becoming, uh, uh, it's not, it's not worked out in your actions. So, so all you're doing is you're filling yourself up with head knowledge. Amen. And uh, children of God, I'm, I'm not preaching at you. I'm just telling you what the word says. And I'm telling you what I've learned in my own walk. And, and I'm going to give you some more scriptures. So you won't say this man is out of his mind and he has a false teaching. Let's go deeper into the word. Okay. Let's go deeper in the word. So this is for the people that, you know, let me let me just read some scriptures, you know, for people that, you know, they believe in eternal security, easy believe in them. Faith alone. We're saved by faith alone. And all of this hyper grace. Let me read you some scriptures about how you can lose your salvation in Jesus. OK, so Philippians 2, 12, it says, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You but many of us, we, we better start working out our salvation with fear and trembling. You it says with fear and trembling. What are you fearing and trembling? You're fearing and trembling that you won't sin against your God. You're fearing and trembling that you won't step outside of his provision and, 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 and go against uh, the spirit of God. In Philippians is telling us that that uh, you you've obeyed. Uh, you know, you you have always obeyed in my presence, but not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So now that these apostles are gone, now that they are gone and, and we're living by the book, it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It, there's a working that needs to be done. But you'll say, oh, that's works. So so why is it saying work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? Obviously, it need to be worked out. It need, you need to check yourself. The Bible says analyze yourself to see if that you are even in the faith. Analyze yourself to see that you are. See if you are even in the faith because many are being deceived. Let's go to the next scripture. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore sin, we also are compassed about with so great of a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Brothers and sisters, it says, let's lay, lay aside the weight, the every weight and the sin. You know, this one save always save. They, they, you're, if the Bible is completely against sin and we're going to get and we're going to get into that. Before you say we are sinners, we're going to get into that. So it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin. And it's talking to believers because obviously we're running. We're running this race. This race is first off being a believer where our life. Is is being tested. We got it. There's things that come upon us in this life to where we're going to have to hold fast to our faith. We're going to have to hold fast and believe in the promises of God because there's things that come upon this world that's going to test our faith, whether it come upon us at our job, our family, but there's things that's going to come upon you. So it's it's already a race to run because you got the devil laying snares too. And it's easy to, to, to turn back to your own vomit. It's easy to say, you know what? I'm going through so much. There is no God because it's happening in this day and age. Many Things are happening to believers 
and they deny God. They don't want to walk. They won't even be a Christian no more. They don't want to even be labeled as a Christian because they think God rejected them. And the things that are going through that they are going through in this life is because of God. So I'm reading this to you, family, to, to let you know that you're in a race and 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 it says run, run this race that is set before you. Let's go to Hebrews 4 1. Let us therefore fear. What are we fearing? Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Does that sound like one save always save? Let me read it again. Let us therefore fear. Fear what, preacher? Fear what, pastor? Fear what, apostle? Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. That's Hebrews 4 word. And you can you can resonate on that. You can saturate yourself on that. But it's saying left of us of what? Entering into his rest. Let's go to the next chapter. Uh, Hebrews 4, 9 through 11. It says there remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. OK, now it's talking about the people of God. For he that is entering into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor. Therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So you're showing that you believe by your works. Abraham showed that he believed that that was God talking to him by his obedience. So it says, let us therefore labor to enter into his rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You're not believing God's word if you're not living God's word. <sighs> Children of God, I, I read this word and I'm feeling I feel the Holy Spirit being grieved because it's simple on this. It's the, the, the words and, and some of us will, will mix the words up and we'll tie it in a knot and say that's not really what it meant. It says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into the, that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. The, 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 the Israelites, they couldn't even enter the promised land. They circled around the mountain. They never entered in because they didn't believe. Many of us are not believing and we're not showing that we believe by our, our true actions in this life. Philippians 3, 14. I press towards the mark of the, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So you're pressing towards that mark. That prize that is in Christ. So what is that mark that you can enter into his rest and he can say, my good and faithful servant, you have stride. You have pushed your way through this life. You have sh shown yourself to be faithful to the little that I have blessed you with. You have lived not to please yourself, but to please me. So I gave you life. I gave you, I saved you out of your sin so that you can go back and save those other people in that jail cell. I saved you out of your sin so you can become my hands and feet and go out and preach my word to my people and warn them and help them and minister unto them and evangelize them so they can come to my wedding banquet. So we press towards the high, the high mark of the prize of the high calling of, in Christ Jesus. We press towards and I'm telling you, many are falling to the wayside. This this life, this the struggles in this life, it draws a man to put down his cross. But only those that endure to the end shall be saved, the Bible says. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain that prize. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate. In all things, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, we run to, to receive an incorrupt, incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it un into subjection. Lest that by any means... When I have preached to others, I myself will be a castaway. Come on. So he said, so as many of us. You see how he says, I myself will be a castaway. You can be a castaway. Some of us, we we're not even. We're not even doing what we ought to be doing. And we're letting our flesh 
override the spirit. He said, I put my flesh under subjection, lest by any means I tell you all of this, but I myself be a castaway. It's, it's one thing to say, oh, I believe. You telling everybody that you have faith, but then when they see your life, they see no faith. And then you're, you're not being an example unto them and you end up being a castaway. Amen. Ephesians 5, 15 through 16 through 17. See them that ye walk circumspectly. See, this is not a work. It says walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. See, a wise man walks circumspectly, making sure that he doesn't sin against his God, as it says in Psalms. So that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because these days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand that understand what the will of the Lord is. What is God's will for you? For all of you that are once saved, always say, what is God's will for you? OK, you believe you, you came to the knowledge of truth. But what is God's will for you? Is it for you to just say you believe and that's the end of your story? That's your Christian testimony is I was, you know, I just came to the knowledge of truth and I believe Jesus died and he rose again. But what what is his will for your life? And many of you cannot answer that question. What is his will? The Bible says he, that, that he wishes none should perish, but have everlasting life and come to repentance. Ephesians 2, 2, it says we're in. In time past, you walked according to the course of this world. If you say you believe in Jesus, somewhere down the line, you used to be a sinner. You used to do the drinking and the partying and the busting guns and fighting and running around and, and doing all the sin that you want to do. Somewhere down the line, people that came to the faith, they obviously lived a savage life before. So if you come to the faith still living that savage life, still sinning, uh, uh, still running, Cursing, smoking, drinking, partying, satisfying your flesh. Then this verse is telling you in time past, it's talking about your past. You used to walk according to the course of this world. You used to love the, the money, the cars, clothes and, and, and all of these things. You, you used to do this. According to the prince of the power of the air, that means the prince of the power of the air is that devil. He used to have your life. He used to draw you to go sin and, and to run around and do these things that wasn't pleasing unto God. But the spirit that is now the Bible. Let me read this chapter, children of God, because I'm going to start preaching. Ephesians 2, 2, it says where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Many of us. We're disobedient to God. And this is talking about all those that are disobedient to God. You you are working under the prince of the power of the air. You're working under his provision. You're not working under the spirit of God. It says the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. OK, so there's a spirit out. That's driving you to not obey your God It's driving you to not obey his word and live in his word and say, Lord, I want to live to serve you and please you in all holiness and righteousness unto my death. Second, Th second Thessalonians one, seven through nine. It says, and to know you and to, and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. What, what is he coming to do? He's coming to take vengeance on them that know not God. Oh, just them that know not God. No, no, not only that. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you say obedience is works. You say holiness is works. Well, guess what? This this fire that's going to be this fire, this vengeance that's coming upon them that know not God is also coming upon them that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Woe to you who call evil good and good evil. Woe to you. Second Timothy uh, two nineteen. Nevertheless. The foundations of God stand sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So any of you that come to the Lord and you say, I believe, I, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm following you. I believe I believe you died and rose again. Well, the Bible says, let every man that that confesses the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. How many of us? are still living in habitual sin. How many of us are still living in, in willful sin, willfully doing, premeditating? It's one thing to stumble and get up 
and walk circumspect. It's one thing to say, oh, you know, I did that out of ignorance. But then it's another thing to to willfully sin. The Bible says everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Oh, Heavenly Father, give your people your word. Let them understand and have have clarity. Give clarity unto your people, Heavenly Father. Oh, children of God, I am grieved. I am grieved and I feel the grieve, uh, the grievance from the Holy Spirit of God. And I'm seeing that many of us are decept, uh, deceived and we're just entangled in, in our own. The Bible says that we are we are drawn away and enticed by our own lust. That's the only time that we are, are led astray. We are led astray and enticed by our own lust. But the Bible says that having this seal, the Lord knows the ones that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So, so those that haven't depart from iniquity, he knows that you do not belong to him. And I'm not even finna low blow you right now. I'm not even finna hit you where it hurt. I'm finna continue to read these scriptures because these scriptures already cut like that two-edged sword. It already cut because it is a two-edged sword. It is coming to pierce you. It is coming to the Bible says I come not to bring peace, but a sword. Oh, yes, he has to bring his sword. It cuts, but it also heals. So I want to I want to cut you today, but I also want you to be healed today because we need to be set free from all these doctrines of devil. So. So the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 38 through 39, it says that now the just shall live by faith. You'll say, "Ooh, see, see, look, it says the just shall live by faith. OK, it says that you're right. So let's let's continue to read. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Some of us, we just really we just read that first part. Oh, now the just shall live by faith. Yep. So so that's that's our walk. That's that's, you know, that's that's the whole sacrifice and the atonement of Christ and risen up again. And there it is there. The just shall live by faith. Yeah. But it also says if any man draw back, if any man goes back to his vomit, if any man goes back to his wicked ways, if any man believes on Christ, but then he goes back to his sin, goes back to the way he used to live, go back to his partying and, and drinking and living his, his, his filthy, just just taking a bath in that muck and mire. God's soul will have no pleasure in you. For we are not of them that draw back unto perdition. But we are of them that believe to the saving of man's soul. Let's go to Colossians 1, 21 through 22. Oh, let's go to Colossians 1, 22 through 23. And you who were sometimes alienated and enemies in your own mind and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now. Have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through the death present you holy? You don't like that word holy. Many of us don't work like that word holy. He said present to you pre to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven. Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Children of God, do you not hear this? OK, OK, we're going we're going to humble ourselves right now. So so I'm reading Colossians. What does it say? It says sometime you were alienated and you were enemies of God. But but God reconciled you in his flesh on the cross through his death. To present you what to present me what holy and unblameable and unprove and unreprovable. So he so he won't have to blame you for anything that you've done or anything that he wants you to be holy, unblameable and unpr unreprovable in his sight. Only only if this only if you continue in the faith grounded and settled. And not moved away. From the hope of the gospel, because many they are not grounded and they move away from the hope. They move away from the, the, the true doctrine of Christ. They move away from the first gospel that was first preached. They move away from the holiness. They move away. And, and, and God is and, and Paul was just explaining to us. That you were once time alienated, but now you're a new creature in Christ. So you ought to walk in the newness of life, the Bible says. In John 8, 31, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Come on, children of God. 
Come on, children of God. The word is not to trick us, to lead us astray or to 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 contradict itself. It, it clearly says in John 8, 31, he's telling he told this to the Jews. So what do you what do you think he's telling to the Gentiles? He said to them, believe on him. He said those that believe on him. If you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, that means you got to move. You got to move. You got to move down that narrow path. You can see the path that's narrow. It's good. It looks narrow. It looks nice. But if you're not walking in it, how are, you, how are you to get to the other side? How are you to enter into his rest if you're not even moving? Narrow is the way that leads to life. But you're supposed to deny yourself and take up your cross and walk down that way. He said, if you continue in my word, if you continue in my commandments, then you are my disciples indeed. Oh, children of God, if you call yourself a, a, a Christian, you ought to, to be a disciple. There's no Christians that's not disciples. Oh, we're disciples indeed, but we're only disciples by moving in obedience. Amen. So first John one seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. But you'll say that's a work walking. So if we walk in the light, that's a work. No, it's not, children of God. It's not a work to walk in light, to walk in newness, to walk in faith, to walk and follow the Lord, carrying your cross. You have fellowship with one another and the, the blood of Christ cleanses you from all sin. Psalms 25, 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. This is in Psalms. It says all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Unto what? Only the only that which keep his covenant and his testimonies. Come on. There is a testimony in your life. You once were alienated. You once were uh, uh, backslidden and you once were running the streets and, and running the muck. And, and bouncing off the walls and jumping around and living to satisfy your flesh. You once were doing this. These things. That was your testimony. But now the new testimony is that you're now holy. You're keeping his covenant. You're keeping his word. You're keeping his promises. And you had hid those promises in your heart, children of God. First Timothy 2.15. Now, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. See, now it's talking about she shall be saved. Now it's talking about a woman. But it's also talking about a soul, period. So now she shall be saved if she what? If she continue in the faith, in love. In holiness, with sobriety. Just come on, children of God. Do you see this? She shall be saved if she continue in the faith. Within love. Some of us, we believe. We don't show no love to our brothers and sisters. We don't show any love. But we say we believe. He said, by this, you shall know they are my disciples. By their love. It's a highway to hell. It's not a highway in holiness. It's not a highway down holiness. It's a highway to hell. And I promise you that. If you continue in the faith and love and holiness with uh, uh, sobriety, which is being sober, you you will you will be saved to the uttermost. First Timothy two fifteen, Luke thirteen twenty four. Strive, come on, come on, strive to enter in at that straight gate. You but you you'll say that's a work. I don't have to strive. All the works was done at the cross. Then, then why does the Bible say in Luke to strive to enter in? Because guess what? Many don't enter in. It says strive to enter in at that straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. Lord have mercy. First Peter 4, 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? This goes out to you. Oh, we all are sinners. We all are not sinners. I don't put myself in that bracket. I am a saint of God now. I'm walking in the newness of life. God will chastise me when I step out of bounds. I live not to grieve the spirit, but I live to serve my God inside my body and outside of my body. Inside my heart, I serve him with my thoughts. I love him and I serve him with my heart. I love him and I serve him with my way. So I have the inward and the outward. So, so, whew. come on, Holy Spirit. Strive to enter into that, that straight gate, children of God. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. First Peter 4, 18. If, if the righteous scarcely be, scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So those that are not living holy are obviously ungodly. And the sinner, 
There, you're you're a sinner and you're ungodly. If you're not, uh, uh, you're not under the blood of Jesus and living for Him and, and cutting off your hand to save your soul. The Bible says, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your eye uh, cause you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand cause you to sin, chop it off. For it's better for you to enter in with one eye into heaven than to go to hell with both eyes. It's better for you to enter into heaven with one hand than to go to hell with with both hands. Okay. This is what the word is saying. And I'm just quoting scriptures, children of God. Let's let's do this. Let's go, let's do this because I live. I live by this word. So I'm going to preach this word that I live by. So. So so let's 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 read. Let's read. <laughs> I got some chapters to read. So Hebrews two, one through three. Therefore, we ought to give earnest heed to the things which we have heard, which is the word of God and what it says in the Bible. Lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great of a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Praise God. So the Bible is clearly saying that the angels, they disobeyed the Lord. They transgressed against the Lord. And now they, they, they're awaiting their judgment. So how much more shall we escape if we neglect so great of a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord? So the Lord spoke about hell. The Lord spoke about the uh, ungodly and the unrighteous. The Lord spoke about all of this out of his own mouth when he came and talked. So who are we to say, oh, the Lord, you know, we don't have to be holy. But he said, be holy. Oh, we, we don't we don't have to, you know, uh, uh, we, 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 you know, hell, hell is not for us. But the Bible clearly says that the, uh, the, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God, forget the ways of God, forget the paths of God. Oh, Jesus taught. And, and sometimes we might need to go back and listen to his teaching. What he said, what he taught in the synagogues. What was Jesus teaching? He was teaching we ought to love our neighbor as thyself. He was he was teaching that 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 we ought to become as little children. Or we would not see the kingdom of God. God was teaching about much. So let's go forward and y'all can meditate on that on your own time. Hebrews 3, 6. But Christ as a son of over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Did you just hear that? If we hold fast, is that a work? It's saying hold fast because if some people, you know how you hold on to something, but then it, it, it loosens out of your hand and you let it go. That's what it's saying. If we hold fast the confidence. If we hold fast. To that word that is preached. If we hold fast to his the, the doctrine that was first preached, the, the gospel that was first preached is one baptism, one gospel, one spirit. OK. Hebrews 3, 12, uh, brothers and sisters, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you have an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You can actually depart from the living God. Oh, yes. You can you can say I have faith. You can have all of this. But truly. You have unbelief and you'll end up departing from the living God. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you have an evil heart. You say, I believe, but you have an evil heart. You have, you, if you truly believe, you have a loving heart. If you truly believe, we'll see your heart in your ways and the way you live and the way you care to the sheep. He told Peter to feed my sheep. If you have a loving heart, we'll care how you how you evangelize the lost. We'll, we'll care about how you uh, uh, humble yourself and you say, Lord, I may not understand it all, but I pray that you would um, show me what you truly mean. Or we'll end up departing from the living God. Hebrews 3, 14, it says, for we if for we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, if we hold, if we hold. But you said we can't lose our salvation. But it just said you, you can depart from the living God. It just said if you don't hold fast to the confidence, it just says if you neglect so great of a salvation. It just says that that that. <laughs> Let's go deeper into that word. So Hebrews 5, 8 through 9, it says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect. He became the author and eternal salvation unto them 
that believe. Oh, oh no, it didn't say that believe, right? It says that obey him. <laughs> How many of us are obeying him? That's not a work, children of God. That's that's you serving your God. I want to obey my God. Whatever he says not to do, I ought not to do it. Amen. So the Bible says that that he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. So Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered as an example. And he was made perfect. And, and he even became an author of eternal salvation unto all of us that obey him, obey his word, obey his commandments. Okay, Hebrews 12, 14, let's do it. Let's do it, children of God. If you got an eye, if you got ears to hear, listen. If you have ears to hear, listen. Hebrews 12, 14 through 15. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness. Without peace, you will not see the Lord. Without loving your neighbor, you will not see the Lord. Without keeping his word, you will not see the Lord. Without being holding steadfast, you will not see the Lord. Without striving in or in, you will not see the Lord. Without uh, uh, being blameless and spotless, you will not see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any of you fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you. And whereby many men are defiled. If you have bitterness, it will defile you. If you fail of grace, it will defile you. All of these things will defile you. It will put stains on your garment. God is looking for a spotless and blameless bride that, that, that has no blemish and unspotted from this world. That's what God is looking for. God is preparing a banquet for the holy bride. Oh, yes, there were there were there were five wise and five foolish. But which ones entered into his rest? Which one was able to be partakers of his 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 banquet of his 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 uh, his supper? Which ones entered in? Tell me, tell me you who, who says that we are saved and we, we can never lose our salvation. We're just sealed into the day of redemption. Well, tell me who entered into his rest and was able to to enter in and to fellowship with him and, 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 and eat and drink with him at his wedding supper. You tell me who was that five that entered in. It was five wise. They were wise. But but tell me about the ones that couldn't enter in. Tell me why they couldn't enter in. Tell me why they believed they had lamps, too. But somewhere down the line, something happened. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we don't want to find out the hard way. We don't want to find out the hard way. Let, let's continue to read. Let me share some scriptures with you, family. Let me let me read these last scriptures to you so I can end this off real nice. I pray that, that what I've said, it, 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 it broke through that hardness of our heart because our hearts do become hard, children of God. So let me let me read to you what the Bible says. Let's go ahead and read. Let's go ahead and read uh, Romans. Let's read Romans. This is this. I'm, I'm telling you, listen, listen, children of God, listen, listen, because I studied, I prayed, I sought the Lord, I fasted, like, listen, listen to this. Rome, this is this is because you say we can't lose our salvation. You say we just lock loaded and we can just we, we chilling after I get saved. I'm good. Listen, Romans 6, 1 through 23. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid that we continue on in sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us are as as we're baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. But knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. 
Likewise, I reckon you, I reckon this, I reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let no, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Come on, that's the word. That's the word. The word is sin had dominion over you when you was in the world. But now that you are, are in the spirit of God, sin has no dominion over you. Sin is not your slave master. You know, the Bible says that God will not, you will not be tempted more than what you can. Uh, God will make a way of an escape for you that says that we all sin and, you know, we all struggle. But the Bible clearly says that we are not under the law, but under grace. We are dead to our, our sin was in that. We are dead to sin now that the spirit is living in our body. Oh, come on. Come on. Neither yield your, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Come on. The Bible says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So your excuse no more is that I can't handle this sin. I can't fight this sin. You are not under the law, but under grace. Oh, oh, oh. And then, and, and then it goes ahead and says this, children of God. Let me continue to read. What then? Shall we sin because we are under? So shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Not ye. God forbid, know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Many of us that sinning were pleasing the devil, but many of us that are living unto righteousness, you say, you see how it says obedience unto righteousness, obedience, obedience. OK, obey. Some of you say that's that's worse, but the Bible is clearly saying obey. Whether you're obeying sin or you're obeying the righteous, you're obeying unto righteousness of God. But I bless y'all, children of God. I'm going to read that. I read that. Let's 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 read first Corinthians six, nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And then it, and then it goes ahead and says, and such were some of you. So you used to do this, but you are washed now. You are sanctified now. And you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the spirit of God. So it's saying that you once you once were that. So you're not that now. So you shouldn't still be doing that now. You you once were doing that, but now you're washed. But and you are sanctified. It says you you were. Were is past tense. All right, let's keep let's keep praying. Let's keep praying, learning, and, and walking. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 10, 26 through 29. Hebrews 26 through 29. It says, For if we sin willfully. After we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for your sins, but a certain fearful looking for a of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. That should scare you, children of God. For if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of truth, willful sin, willful, premeditated, you, you, you sinning, you saying it's OK, you do it. You're, you're not trying to run from it. You're not trying to cut off your hand. You're not trying to say, Lord, help me and remove this from me. you. Just, you know, you're sinning willfully. You, you knew Jesus was Lord. You, you, you claim to be a believer, but you're sinning. You're in sin. You still lie. You still tell uh, you still tell lies. You run around and you do all of this and you're not uh, uh, repenting. You're not repenting and turning to God and saying, Lord, I need help with this. Remove this from me because I know this is not of you. So let's continue to read. 28. He that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose you shall be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot uh, the son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and made holy. I mean, where he was sanctified. An unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. We grieve the spirit of God. 
When we sin, we grieve the spirit of God when we willfully do things. We don't think about it. We can care less. And we say, oh, well, I believe and I'm blessed. God loves me. And all of these things, we grieve the spirit of God, children of God. So the Bible says that. Whew, this this is a deep study. And uh, the Bible says in James 2, 14 through 26. The Bible says in 2.14, uh, 2.14 through 26, in James 2.14 through 26, it says, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Hey, man, depart in peace, be warm and filled, huh? does, does not, and, and you don't give them what they need, to keep them warm for the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well, but even the devils believe and they tremble. But thou wilt know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by his works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith brought his works? And by works was faith made perfect. And the scriptures were fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by faith, I mean by works, a man is justified and not by faith only? Let me repeat that. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So I'm telling you, children of God, faith without obedience is dead. Abraham could have heard God's voice and Abraham could have ignored God's voice. Abraham could have ignored God's laws, his, his commandments, his word. He could have he could have ignored his guidance, his counsel, all of these things. But the Bible says that he obeyed and his works was and he obeyed and his obedience was was considered to him for righteousness. So I'm telling you, children of God, I'm telling you and I'm telling you now, we are justified by faith, but our works justify the faith. And if you can't comprehend that, something is, is truly wrong. Something is truly wrong. So so let me go ahead and read the uh, I think uh, am I finished? Let me let me see. This 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 study is deep, children of God. I, I, I study to to deliver you this. And I pray this blesses you. Let's let's go to let's go to uh, Revelation twenty one eight. So Revelation twenty one eight it says that, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Children of God, that doesn't seem like you can believe and live however you want to live. You know, all of this easy believism is kind of like a license to sin. Oh, well, uh, I have faith, so I'm, I'm I locked and loaded and I'm going to heaven. Well, God is against the sinners. He's against people that work iniquity. The Bible says God is angry. No, matter of fact, the Bible says in Psalms 3, 3, or I think 3, 3 or 5, 5, it says God hates all workers of iniquity. He hates all workers of iniquity. But you say, I believe. Well, since I believe, you know, I'm good. What the Bible even it says even the devils believe and they not finna go to heaven. They not finna be saved. They believe you believe. Yeah, it's, it's good to believe that Jesus died and rose again. But if it, if it shows nothing, if it does nothing to your heart, if it does nothing to your life, it has no effect whatsoever in your faith. Your faith is empty. It's not filled with with holiness. It's not filled with obedience. Your faith is just an empty confession. And many of us, we're going to be burning and we're going to look back and, and say how foolish were we to believe the devil's lies. Amen. And. Uh, and I want to read uh, Matthew. Let me read Matthew. Uh, I think that's the last reading for me. 
Okay, let's let's go to Matthew. Okay, let's let's read Matthew 13, 24. So this is a parable about the sower. So Matthew 13, 24. It says, and another parable went forth of them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sows good seeds in the field. But while the men slept, his enemies came and sowed tares among the wheat, and the wheat and, and, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, it brought forth fruit. Then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did, did not thou sow good seeds in the field? Then why are there tares? He said unto them, the enemy, an enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, well, thou then we go and gather them up. But then he said, no, no, no. Lest while we gather them up, we gather up the tares and, and, and we end up rooting up the wheat with them. So so let both of them grow together until the harvest is done. And in the same time and in, in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather them together. First, the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into unto my barn. So let's let's jump over to to uh, Matthew thirteen thirty six, where it explains that parable. So the disciples, uh, the disciples came unto him saying, um, hey, tell us what that parable of the tares of the field mean. And he said he answered them and said unto them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sows them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are, the ga the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels. And they shall gather out of, the, of, of his kingdom all things that offend. And them which do iniquity. Did you hear me? The son shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of the out of his kingdom all that things that offend and them that do which iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has heirs who have ears to hear. Let him hear again the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I'm going to just stop right there. Amen. So, children of God, I'm going to end this video. I've read you scriptures. And, and I, I share with you the truth. And it seems like it's raining right now. Amen. I love rain. So, children of God, it's, 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 tr as, it's hard. As, as hard as it may seem to believe. God is looking for holiness. He's not looking... For a person that wants to live for their own self-satisfaction. They're not fruitful for the kingdom. They're not even being fruitful. They're being slothful. They're being... The Bible spoke about... The Bible spoke about those useless servants. Those unprofitable servants. Those slothful servants. Uh, children of God, after you get saved, you live for God. You're no longer living for yourself. When you were in your sin, you were living for your and that is not a work. You know, this one save always save, you all say that it's a work. I'm finna, you know what? I'm finna I'm finna end all of this work stuff right now. I'm finna show you something what the Bible says. The children of God and the children of Satan. Because many of us are really not children of God and we'll find that out when God is snatching up the harvest. Because those harvests, you know, we look alike. We look like believers. We, there's many in the church house right now. They know the scriptures. They pray. They worship and do all of this. We finna end this right now. In 1 John 3.10, And the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God. Period. Period. Boy and Blake. The Bible says, he that does not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loves not his brother. Period. And hold on, let, let me just read it from the beginning. Little children, let no man deceive you. 1 John 3, 7 through 9. Little children, he's talking about believers. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, 
born again, spirit, filled with his spirit, does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot willfully sin. He cannot habitually sin. He cannot continually sin because he is born of God. For this is the message. Okay, and yeah, because he's born of God. In this, the children of God are manifested, that the children of devil, whosoever does not uh, righteousness is not of God, neither he that, that loves his brother. He uh, either he Neither he that loves not his brother. Amen. So for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that he should love one another, that we should love one another, not as Cain and Abel, who was uh, of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew who slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteousness. So we see Cain and Abel. We see Cain. He killed Abel. Cain was filled with the devil. Not filled with the spirit, not filled. He, you know, he he wasn't filled with righteousness. So, so his works were manifested. We see what he was doing. He was evil, and we see his brother Abel was righteous. He was good, and we see what happened. It was good and evil. So let's continue to read. We finna, we finna, we finna silence all of this. He say, she say, and all of this, you know, Bible doctrine and and popcorn gospel. You know, you want to pick what sounds good. Let's let's read this. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of them. Do you see that? Jesus was calling people you are of your father, the devil. So there are children of the devil in this world. And there are also children of light in this world. So many of us, we, we say, oh, I know God. But then you, you're uh, the God. Jesus is really calling you the child of the devil because you're doing the lust of your father. You would do. So me, when I was in my sin, brothers and sisters, when I was running the street, busting guns, fighting, selling drugs, running around, sleeping around. When I was doing all of these things, I was not a child of God. Biblically speaking. I was not a child of God, but I was a child of the devil because I was doing the lust of my father. Amen. But now that I'm doing the will of God and now I'm living for him and I'm living to please him and I'm actually walking in the newness of life and allowing the Holy Spirit to finish that great work that he started. I am now a child of God and I no longer. The Bible says that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Whoever was born. So you can't say this scripture is a lie. Whoever's born of God, whoever's born again, whoever's uh, delivered from death to life, they don't sin. They don't wake up in the morning and premeditate. Oh, yeah, I'm about to go sin. You know, it's one thing to stumble and repent and say, Heavenly Father, I'm weak in this area. But it's one thing to just swim in it. You swimming in it. You you bathing in it. You rolling in it like a pig rolls in the mud. Let's go to the next chapter because we finna we finna silence all the he say she say and, and, and bend in the scriptures to 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 your benefit. No, no, we not we not finna have that. So so let's go to the Bible says in Ecclesiastes twenty thirteen it says let us hear the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Now if you're reading the same Bible as I am reading. And you're not getting this revelation. Then God then hid this from your eyes. He hid this away from your prideful heart. He hid this away because we, we want to get what we want to get. We want to get the scriptures that we want to get. And take them. Well, well God, you know, he loves us. God loves all of the world. So we get this loving God. But the, all, the Bible also talks about God hates. He, got, he, he hates all workers of iniquity. He hates a lion tongue. He hates a, a, a feet that's that's swift to shed in blood. God hates. If God is good, he also has to hate evil. If God is holy, he has to also hate unholiness and ungodliness. We we get a one sided God in this life, folks. And I'm telling you right now. Let's hear the whole conclusion. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is your whole duty. What, what part of serving God don't we understand? See, this one save, always save. They, they say serving God, that's works. Why do we have to serve God if Christ already died and he rose again and now I'm born again and I'm done? Okay. What part of serving God don't we understand? 
Let me read you Malachi 318 because they were serving God back in the day and we ought to serve God today. Just because Christ came and died don't mean, oh, that's the end. We don't have to do nothing. We don't have to do nothing. That's the devil's lie. You better work out your own salvation. You better work it out like a muscle. You better read your scriptures. You better pray for interpretation. I'm telling you, there's many hirelings out there that's leading sheep astray. So Malachi 318, then shall you return and discern between righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Oh, yes, we ought to discern who is of God and who is not of God. The Bible says judge a tree by its fruits. And we're going to get into that as soon as I'm done with this. First Timothy 412, it says, let no man despise your youth, but be a pattern for the believers in speech and conduct in love in faith and in purity. So it's saying be an example. So if you're saying I believe, well, are you an example to other believers? Are you? Or are you telling them it's OK to to rob, steal, kill and destroy? Are you telling them it's OK to, you know, do what you want to do? But the Bible says that that do you have a pattern? Are you showing an example to other believers in word? Indeed, you see how it says in speech and in conduct. So you can say, oh, yeah, you can talk all this faith stuff. It sounds good. But what about indeed in conduct? What about in love and in faith? What about impurity, impurity in holiness? The, the part where it says impurity is, is in holiness. Are, are you being an example? Oh, woe is you. This is first Timothy 412. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters for either he, he will hate one and love the other. Some of us, we haven't made Christ our master. So we're not serving him. We're serving Satan. We're serving ourselves, which is serving Satan. Satan is serving himself. Satan, he, he rebelled against God. He wants to be God. He wants to be his own God. And some of us, we find ourselves saying we believe, but we're we're being our own God. We exalt our we exalt ourselves. We're not serving God. We're serving our flesh. We're serving ourselves, which means we're serving ourselves and we're making ourselves as God. We we turn ourselves into an idol. The Bible says no, no man can serve two masters. So there is no gray areas. It's either you're serving God or you're serving the devil. So no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other. Or as he will hold to one and despise others. You cannot serve God and mammon. Let's go to Deuteronomy 13, 4. You shall walk after the Lord, your God, and fear him. I hear a lot of that in the New Testament. And you keep his commandments. I hear a lot of that in the New Testament. And obey his voice. I hear a lot of that in the New Testament. And you shall serve him. I see a lot of that in the New Testament. And cleave unto him. And I see a lot of that in the New Testament. Let's go to Romans 12, 1. Let me just read uh, Deuteronomy 13, 4 again. You shall walk after the Lord, your God, and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And many of us, we are not doing that. So Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy. I know you don't like to hear that word. Holy. Holy. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is why you even got saved. This is why God even seen you. And he said, OK, I'm going to save you for you to live for me, for you to make sure that you don't lean unto the lust of your flesh. And he's all. And this is your reasonable service that you lay down your life and you live unto God with worship of praise. And you're sacrificing yourself unto God, leaving yourself at his dispense. That is your reasonable service. First Samuel 12, 24. Only fear the Lord. And serve him in truth with all your heart for consider how great things he has done for you. So we got these faith believing, Jesus believing people, but they serve not their God. After all the things he's done for them, he saved them out of sin. He tried to deliver you from it. He tried to, uh, 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 you know, introduce you to his truth. But you came to the knowledge of it, but it didn't change your heart. You came to the knowledge of it. But it didn't change your life. You came to the knowledge of it, but we don't see it in your works, in your life, in your obedience unto him. You came to the knowledge of it. It's good that you know it. It's good to know that. It's good to know that the water's cold. It's good to know that the sun comes up in the morning. It's good to know that. It's good to know that I love, but, but, but me knowing that I love, am I demonstrating this love? What part of serving God don't we understand? And some say it's a work. 
but I call it a, a love story. It's showing that we love God. We dedicated to him. We holding fast to him. So, so it, it really upsets me because, you know, this one save always save. So if, if we're just believing in faith and we just come in agreement by faith, we saved and we just chilling. So basically you're saying no perseverance, no, no striving. Nope, no, no striving in or in. No taking up your cross. Nope, that's works. Following the Lord. Yep, that's works. No walking out our salvation. Nope, that's works. That's works. Yep. No pressing towards the high mark of the high call. Nope, that's works. No laboring. No, no laboring. No, we can't labor. The Lord labored for us at the cross. Nope, no laboring. No workmanship. No, no, no serving. No, we can't serve. That's still serve. That's still works. No circumspect. Not work. No, no circumspect. Walking circumspectly. Nope. No, none of that. No holiness. No, nope, of course not. No practice in righteousness no no as he is righteous no no we can't no that's works no doing the will of god no that's that this works it sounds works yes that's work based right that's that under the law doing the will of god is under the law no no fruitfulness nope no fruit nope i just believe i just confess my faith i believe in in, 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 in eternal security and nope no fruitfulness in my life no fruits showing that i believe and and then i'm born again and converted no fruits Nope, nope, no fruits bringing uh, on a testimony of God's glory in my life. Nope, no, none of that. No good steward being a good steward of what God has given you. Nope, none of that. So it's just it's just a shame. It's just a shame where, you know, many of us, we we allow we, we allow Satan to trick us. And it's just a shame, man. It's it's it's, it's crazy. So let's I'm going to go to Matthew seven. Uh. And you and you know what? You know, usually these one save always save. Usually, I want to say this, brothers and sisters, if you are listening to me and you believe in this doctrine, the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 5, 15. I'm gonna tell you this verse because usually those people that say one save always save, they're into the the homosexuality. They're in they're in they're 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 into the LGBT. They're into people committing sin. They say, Oh, God understand. They they're into it. So they're never going to rebuke you or reprove you or, or tell you what the scriptures say that, so that you may be saved. They're condoning in it. And little do you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 15, he that justifies the wicked and he that condemns the just, even they both are abomination unto the Lord. Let's go to let's go to that 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 Matthew 7, 16 through 20. OK. So Matthew 17 so Matthew 7, 16, Matthew 7, 16, it says, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes? The Bible says, beware of false prophets. That means beware of false Christians. Beware of people that come saying they are Christian. They believe in Jesus. Be beware of anyone. Because they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raveling, raven, ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns and figs of, of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Where, wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. And not everyone that says to me, nor Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does, he that does, he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. You shall know them by their fruit. So, so children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, I did this study. Uh, I love y'all. I pray that you receive this word. I've, I've, I've gave you scriptures that you can meditate on. You can watch this all over again from the beginning. But we are not Christians in word, but we're Christian in word and deed. Because our deeds show that we are truly converted. The Bible says, be ye converted that your sins may be blotted out. Many of us are not even converted. So we only believe, but not unto salvation. The Bible says, you believe in your heart that God risen him from the dead. 
and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. Many of us, we just confessing, but there's not an inward work being done. There's nothing happening in the heart to change your love for your, your brother and sister to change and forgive your neighbor and, and, and walk in love and, and just start. You, you should love God so much. It should compel you to go preach the word, to minister to souls. It, it can compel you to, to, to pray for people around the world. But, but we see people that just, you know, they just say once save, always say we'll never leave our, we'll never lose our soul. And I just read you scriptures that if you believe in that doctrine, you'll be surprised at the end. So I bless you. So Heavenly Father, I want to pray right now that whoever's listening to this, Lord, they received it into their heart. They understand that that they are to obey you and to walk in the newness of life and to turn away from that old way, from that old man. For that man, old man is crucified and on the cross. He's nailed to the cross. And the Bible says we ought to walk in the newness of life. And there's nothing old and new and there's nothing new and old. Lord God, I ask that you give us understanding, give us revelation. Lord God, get a, give us a greater revelation of, of the five wise and five foolish. What were the difference between the two? For they both had faith. I bless you, Jesus. And I understand, Lord God, that when we lean on our own understanding, we will be deceived. But when we seek you for wisdom and knowledge, Lord, you will reveal all things unto us. So I bless those that are listening. I bless this teaching and there's many teachings out there, Lord. But I just ask that you bless the teaching of your word as of now. Bless those that are walking in truth, that are preaching the true gospel, the unadulterated gospel, Lord God, not taking out bits and pieces, but truly the whole counsel of God. For you said, curse to any man that takes or adds to your word. So Heavenly Father, I take and not add to your word, but I preach your word. I live your word. And I do it for your for your good service. I do it for you. So, Heavenly Father, have your way in our life. And may we be worthy to escape the things to come.